All right, what's up, everybody? Today we are going to be learning a little bit about, and I'm sorry because my camera's in the way. I think y'all can read that, maybe. I'm going to leave it alone. Alexander the Great, uh, one of the world's greatest conquerors of all time. We're going to be learning about who he is. And uh, he kind of fits in with the Greek um, culture, I guess you could say. And believe it or not, contrary to what a lot of people don't know about him, is he actually was not from Greece, but he was taught the ways of the Greek from a young, young age. He was actually from an area north of Greece called Macedonia. We're going to learn about who he is today. So let's check this out, if I can get this to advance. There we go. All right. So here's some key terms. We're going to learn about a guy named Philip the Second. All right. The Phalanx. Then we got Alexander the Great and the term Hellenistic. And here's the thing. Alexander the Great, why he's relevant is because he builds this huge empire that spreads Greek culture, tradition, heritage, language, all these things that we've been discussing in class. He's going to spread them across parts of Asia and even into northern Africa. And without Alexander the Great, guys, I would be honest, you probably um, would not be learning much about the Greeks. Because as you are well aware, before Alexander the Great's going to show up, do y'all remember what the Greeks were doing? They were actually constantly in warfare with each other. We've learned about the Persian Wars in this class. Uh, we've also discussed in this class how, um, you know, the Peloponnesian War, that was an issue. And, and they were divided into separate little city-states, right? And they never quite got along because everyone liked their own independence and freedom. Anyways, let's press forward with this. So Macedonia to the north, all right? Here's the things you need to know. To the north, all right, you have this area called Macedon right here. Y'all see this little red dotted line? That is Macedon. And down here, you have Peloponnesus, Boeotia, Attica, Euboea, uh, all these areas that have kind of come up in the talks of class. To the south, these make up the Greek peninsula, basically. And to the north, this little area, you have Macedon, all right? And really, um, the Greeks didn't see the Macedonians as a threat. They kind of saw them as a little bit more barbaric and not as intellectually enlightened as they were. But that all is going to change with a man named Philip II. Yes, Philip II, Macedonia's king, began to plan his attack on Greece that was weakened by the civil wars. You remember what that civil war area was called? We have that. Sorry, you might hear my wife sneezing and the baby in the background. They're back there chilling. But um, do you remember what the civil war was called, the big one that breaks out after the, the Persian Wars? It was actually the Peloponnesian War, all right? And here's the deal. All right, Athenian leaders knew, all right, that maybe Macedon might attack, but they weren't sure. So they're kind of playing it chill, all right? Uh, playing it really chill, and the Macedonians are going to creep in like a little thief in the night, all right? And they're not going to be ready for it. So check us out. Here's the thing that really set uh, the Macedonians apart, all right? Philip II's military strategy. Uh, he was a good military leader. Uh, from, you know, an early age, he was constantly around warfare and things like that, like many good leaders and generals were, because that was a main part of the ancient lifestyle. If you didn't know how to fight, you didn't know how to survive. And he is famous for not just dominating, but just perfecting the art of war around Greece at this time. The phalanx, y'all remember that strategy? You can look at this picture right here. You had soldiers standing shield by shield with, with spears. And basically, the Spartans, their spears were approximately about 10 feet long. Uh, Philip took it to a new level. He said, we're going to use 16 feet. So think about that, you know. What's going to attack and pierce another person first, the 10-foot spear or the 16-foot spear? Obviously, y'all should know the answer to that. And the phalanx, we know how that worked. You had soldiers standing close together uh, with a spear ready to go, sword on back usually, and you had a shield in this hand, and people were shoulder to shoulder ready to poke, stab, deflect, stab, and just take down their opponent little by little. And as the front row would get killed, the next line actually would step up. Philip used that to basically slowly conquer Greece. If we go back here, he works his way down, excuse me, Taco Bell, giving me the hiccup burps. Uh, we got them going down to places like Thessaly and then working their way down slowly into places like Athens, right? and slowly taking over the entirety of the Greek peninsula. So after he tackles Greece, all right, Philip II is then going to turn his attention to Persia. Unfortunately, though, he is going to be assassinated. Yes, 100% assassinated. Um, and there's an issue, you know. He had political rivals who wanted his power, who wanted to end, you know, what he was trying to do and take over that power for themselves. However, 
Fortunately for Philip, his legacy is going to carry on because of his super competent son, Alexander, who y'all are going to know very soon as Alexander the Great, but I'm not going to call him Alexander the Great uh, at this moment because he's not known as that yet. He will become known as that later on in history. All right. So check this out. Let's talk about Alexander. He's going to get salty. Like salt bay. Woo-wee. Yeah, like that. Sheesh. Yes. All right. Alexander is going to get really upset because what just happened to his pops? He's gone. He is 100% gone. And that is going to be an issue. So Alexander, all right, he's going to make an example of different areas, all right, that do him wrong. For example, after Philip died, Thebes, another Greek city, is going to rebel against Alexander. And that seemed like a good idea because get this, at the time, Alexander was only 20 years old. You guys are like 13, 14, something like that. So like, think about that. That's younger than I am, you know. I don't feel like I could comfortably rule an entire nation, right? So Alexander's only going to be 20 when he takes power. Alexander is seen as a weakling, and the Thebians try to take hold of that. And the Thebians were also a group when the Persian Wars were going on. They were siding with the Persians. So the Thebians always had, like, this vibe of, like, being sketchy and acting sus. Uh, but here they are. They are rebelling against Alexander. Now Alexander's going to make a huge example. Check this out. He destroyed the entire city and enslaved its people. That was something that was not uncommon with Alexander the Great either because we're going to see very soon in this class, y'all are actually going to do some, some uh, really cool activity on Alexander the Great. You're going to see what a lot of primary source writers and historians said about him, what he would do when people rebelled, and it was brutal. Very, very brutal, yes. All right, so just keep that in mind. Confident no one else would rebel, Alexander begins to build this massive empire. And we're going to look at maps and stuff too. But what he's going to do is he's going to very soon earn that nickname, Alexander the Great, because he is going to become one of the greatest conquerors in the history of mankind. For his time, he was the greatest. There's no Roman Empire yet. The biggest empire that the world had really even seen up to this point. And I mean, we haven't really learned about Asia, but there's some large empires going on in Asia. But specifically the Persians. The Persians have built a very large empire at this point in history. Alexander is going to expand basically what the Persians did and, and spread Greek culture throughout it. So it's really dope. Just keep that in mind. All right, so building an empire. He starts by invading Persia, winning over and over and over again. Uh, a lot of times people would know how he was. They would say, Alexander, you're a bad man. We've heard what you've done to people who rebel against you. You enslave them. We don't want that to happen, and we do not want to be massacred. So they would literally, he would show up looking all cool, looking all dope. He would literally just take it. For free. People just hand it over. For, so, like, for real, get this. When he goes into Egypt, they literally, right on the spot, they blow a little smoke. All right? They say, ooh, Alex, you're so good. You're so handsome. We know you are more than just a mortal man. You are the son of the gods. You are. Fair. Now, was he, you know, this deity? No. He was a normal man, but he was so aggressive in what he wanted that people literally just handed him stuff. And Alexander then defeats Persia once uh, uh, and for all, and the king will eventually flee, and that will make him their leader. Uh, and then this is an interesting picture right here. Here's a picture of Alexander the Great. Uh, you know, how do they know this is him? Not sure. Uh, it's just one of those interesting things. I cannot read hieroglyphics. But anyways, we're going to keep rocking and rolling. And check out this. Alexander the Goat, as y'all probably want to call him, right? Check out where he starts. He starts in Pella right here, which is uh, kind of the west of Macedon. And he's going to take over Greece. And he's slowly going to work his way. And check out where he goes. He goes through Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, uh, through the Persian Empire. He's going to go down through Canaan, which is where the early Hebrews lived, as y'all remember, into Egypt. And he's going to work his way all the way over, guys. Look, to the Indus River Valley area. We haven't really learned about the Indus River Valley yet, but it is a very old civilization. He's going to work his way just that far. Why didn't he go further? Y'all will see very soon in this class. Maybe not exactly today. All right, but anyways, he's going to randomly die when he is 33 years old, all right? Why do really awesome people die young? Like, same thing happened with Jesus, right? But Alexander's going to die when he's 33. Here's what happened. He wanted to keep going, but he had to stop, all right? His army did not want to. They were actually on the brink, y'all, of a mutiny. Do y'all know what a mutiny is? A mutiny is when people on the bottom 
try to overthrow the people on the top. All right. And I'm kind of watching this clock because I, I, I don't use this software a lot. So I'm not sure when it cuts off, but I'm going to try to keep working quickly. But basically what happens, he's on his way home. Uh, as we've seen, you know, if you'll look right here, it says conquer Mediterranean. When it changes to tan from Egypt to Babylon, he's conquering, conquering. And then he's slowly going to go to the east. So we follow the green line right here, right? He's going to go very far up into this area of the world. All right, we're getting into the Himalayas and stuff now. You know where Mount Everest is, right? Mount Everest is actually like, if I'm not mistaken, like right in here. So that's where he's at. It's pretty rough terrain where he's conquering with thousands of soldiers. And he's going to slowly make his way back. Why did he turn around? It's because his men tried to mutiny. They didn't want to go any further. Uh, but anyways, what ends up happening is he makes it all the way back to Babylon. Do y'all remember where we learned about Babylon, the ancient city of Babylon? And what civilization did this used to be a part of? I'll give you a hint. You, Frades River. Yes, sir. Yeah, some of y'all probably know. That is Mesopotamia. And y'all remember who was from Babylon? The man. He wrote the code. He wrote a bunch of laws. They believed it had no flaws because they believed this man was chosen by the gods. It is Hama, Hama, Hammurabi. Yeah, Hammurabi. All right. So Hammurabi right here. All right. This is where he lived. But Hammurabi's long gone. All right. This is, you know, uh, how many years later? Probably close to 2000. Anyways, so I, I'm not sure exactly on the exact, uh, no, bleh, I'm not sure on the exact number of years. But anyways, just to put it in perspective, that's where we're at. Uh, Persian Empire territory, Babylon, one of Alexander's favorite cities. He stops there for a reason. Alexander wanted to go on. All right. He's going to get sick at 33 and drop dead. All right. And basically, he dies at age 33. Uh, and he is going to be buried in Egypt in a golden coffin. Now, I might want to ask you guys, why in the world did they bury him in Egypt? I thought he was Macedonian. I thought he was kind of Greek. He had this Greek culture. He knew Greek language. Uh, that's the way he lived his life because he saw what the Greeks were doing. He knew how awesome it was. But why in the world would they have buried him in Egypt? It's a good question. But if you're paying attention, they believed in Egypt he was a son of the gods. Now, did they actually believe that or do they just not want to die? That's for you to decide. Um, but he was named the Pharaoh, right? So he's buried in Egypt. Uh, interesting thing, uh, if you have Disney Plus, I'm not telling you you have to have it, but if you do have it, there's some wonderful National Geographic documentaries on there. I highly, highly, highly recommend those documentaries. Uh, there's a really good one. Uh, it's called like Searching for the Tomb of Alexander or something. They are looking all through northern egypt they, they've pinned it down to a royal city i'm trying to remember the exact city that it is uh maybe cairo or i don't think it's cairo i think it's more like where alexandria was i'd have to look at the exact uh documentary i can't remember the exact city that's that's killing me anyways they are looking and they think they are within a quarter mile of where his tomb is they are sending uh like seismic shocks to the ground to see what is under the ground and all that and they think they found a burial chamber. So maybe, who knows, maybe by the time I'm teaching y'all's kids one day or something, they might have found the tomb of Alexander. That'd be pretty sick. Or who knows, they might find it tomorrow or five years from now. That'd be a huge find. So keep up with ancient history and what's going on in the world of archaeology. But no one knows what killed him. All right? um, some say he was poisoned uh, because he died at such a young age and based off his symptoms. They know that he had fever. Uh, that he was, you know, had like sweats and he was vomiting a lot. He just was not well, uh, turning very pale. Uh, based off what a lot of historians believe, based off the symptoms, some believe it could be malaria or typhoid fever. Y'all know that this part of the world, uh, like in North African stuff, uh, throughout history, it's been notorious for things like uh, malaria, typhoid fever. Um, but his tomb, like I said, is in Egypt and is still yet to be found. All right, so here's the one thing why Alexander's huge, right? He, how long did it take him to build this massive empire? Uh, if we're looking at this map right here, right? How long did it take him to build this thing? Uh, don't look at what the map dates say, because it, it is right. It took him about 13 or 14 years, about as old as you guys are. Uh, he literally spread Greek culture from this little peninsula right here all the way through here. That is why some people call him Alexander the Great. Some people refuse to call him the Great because he did some, I guess you could say, uh, unsavory things uh he didn't play the game nice uh but 
he really accomplished a lot of cool things and he deserves a huge shout out. Just like the Mongols deserve a huge shout out. Like any place that builds a huge empire, they don't do the nicest things to get to where they were, but they do contribute a lot to what happens in the history of mankind. But it took him about 13 years. And in that 13 years, here's why this was so big. All right. Alexander's empire was the largest ever of its time. And he founded cities and named many of them Alexandria uh, very soon in this class, not in this but soon so like the next few days y'all will be looking at maps that show just how often he named cities after himself and it's kind of disturbing it's like if i had a son and i named all of them little coach cox you know or i find a city and i name it hunter right uh i wouldn't do that but alexander did why did he do that maybe because he wanted a legacy right um anyways uh, modeled many cities after ancient Greece too. Uh, built temples uh, across the place. Uh, here's a temple right here, as you can see in the top right, in which he built it in the Greek manner. And that is not in Greece, y'all. That is actually in Asia Minor. Built amphitheaters. Y'all are well aware that the Greeks were all about drama and art. Uh, one of the earliest civilizations to do that on a large scale. That was people's entertainment, games and art, uh, like like theater and stuff. And then one of his biggest accomplishments, which is kind of depressing. Uh, but it's actually also quite impressive. In Egypt, Alexandria, Egypt, he built one of the world's greatest ancient libraries. But you want to know what happened to it? The Romans burned it. Oh. We'll learn about why later. But it literally housed knowledge from Asia, from Africa, from Europe. And they were sharing these ideas. And Alexander wanted access to knowledge. And that's something to think about, guys. Y'all have something at your disposal right now. Being in high school being in middle school, right, where you can go and learn. Some of y'all will go on to get a trade or go to college, and you're going to further that education. But always consider, the more knowledge you have, the more you can expand what you can do in this world. Think about that. We want you guys to be educated. Alexander wanted to be educated. He wanted people who lived in his empire to be educated. So they felt free. So they felt like they could go and accomplish the greatest things this world has ever seen. So that's something to think about. This library, though, is going to burn to the ground. I think historians say about 10% of it survived, which is kind of depressing. So think about how much we might know or how much further we'd be ahead in history if that never happened. All right, check this out. Greek culture is still going to spread, though, all right? Alexander encouraged people to keep their own cultures, all right? So what would happen is he would say, look, keep your own culture, keep your religion, do your thing. You don't have to be polytheistic like the Greeks. He's like, technically, I'm not even Greek. But what I want to do is I want to share with you all this idea that you can better yourselves, much like the Greeks have been doing in places like Peloponnesus, right? So he said, you know, I want you to learn to speak the Greek language. I want you to have high educational standards, and I want you to better yourselves. We call this spreading of the Greek culture, the architecture, the art, the, the philosophy and education and warfare. We call this Hellenization, H-E-L-L-E-N. I-Z-A-T-I-O-N, yes, Hellenization, or we call them Hellenistic cultures. That means where they got their normal cultures and blended it in with the Greeks. And maybe we can look at some cool stuff later, not just right now, but later. So you would see, you know, uh, Greek art mixed with Egyptian art, right? Or Persian art mixed with Greek art, or maybe even religion starting to blend, right? Or maybe even when they uh, built buildings, right? You started to see a little bit of that, like this, this, uh, which I'm pointing at my screen. There's my mouse. You know, this is not in Greece. You know, people started building temples to their own gods in a Greek manner, and it's it's pretty cool. All right. So, anyways, uh, I'm gonna try to end very soon. But here's what's gonna happen: when Alexander died, it's obvious he was 33 years old. He did not have an heir. All right. So what's gonna end up happening is he had people that he was tied to. If you don't have a kid or an heir that's ready to go right then, and you haven't set up that last will and testament or whatever, last will and testament or testimony, whatever the term is, y'all know what a last will is, right? Your final wishes before they bury you in the ground. Uh, he didn't really have that ready to go. So basically what ends up happening is he has three generals he's super tight with, and he divides them up. And y'all can assume how he probably divides up his empire. As y'all can tell, what did he take over? He took over Greece, he took over Northern Africa, and he took over parts of Persia. That's basically how they're going to divide this thing up. Check this out. What's going to end up happening is you got one in Macedonia, one in Egypt, one in Greece. And right here is the predicament. 
Uh, you have the Antigonid Kingdom, which was basically like Greece. All right. Some of the Greek states became independent again. You have the Seleucid, all right, which was over here. I don't really care if you know these names, but if you want to get technical, these are the names. And then you had the Ptolemaic. Uh, this is actually the lineage from which Cleopatra will come. Cleopatra was not a true Egyptian. She actually had Greek heritage, uh, believe it or not. So, oh, I can actually move this. All right. So, you know, the New Macedonia, uh, it basically was weak. The Romans are going to wreck it. Y'all are probably well aware. Rome is right here across this sea right here, the Adriatic. And they are eventually going to spread this way and destroy it. Syria, uh, as y'all probably are well aware, um, even when we learn about Mesopotamia, there are so many cultures in this part of the world. Them being unified is not going to be easy. Uh, the Persians unified them. But that was with, you know, what I guess you could say, like carrying a like a big stick, right? Like you're going to follow instructions or we're going to do something about it. That was the Persian way. Uh, and they once you followed, you know, like they were pretty chill about it. But anyways, uh, what's going to end up happening is this one's going to fall apart. The Seleucids uh, is going to be very fractured from the beginning. They are going to fall to the Romans eventually. The Romans are going to take over a huge chunk of the Middle East. Why do they want the Middle East? Uh, well, it's pretty obvious. If there's someone that's already established trade routes, y'all are well aware of the Persians. They had a great set of roads. Y'all remember which leader built the royal roads in this area? Yeah, if you said Darius or Darius, that's the man right there. King Darius, yep, he built these uh, roads. And, you know, people want access to that. It's more trade, right? And the one that's actually going to last the longest is really going to be right here in Egypt. Uh, it's going to fall kind of to the Romans with uh, some stuff going on. There's going to be a huge civil war after this man right here is going to be assassinated. All right, y'all know who that guy is? That is your boy, Julius Caesar, one of Coach Cox's favorite characters in history. Look at that hairline. Yeah, it looks kind of like, look at mine. It's starting to, starting to slide back a little bit. That's all right. It's because I'm getting old. But anyways, me and your boy, JC, Julius Caesar right there. Uh, you know, with the matching hairlines. Yeah, I like your cut, G. Um, all right, so that is it. Um, if you have any questions about these people, feel free to holler at me sometime because I love talking history, all right? And there's a million things that if I wasn't doing a video lecture that I would sit there and talk to y'all about. Some things I may know, some things I may not know, but it's because I'm always learning. And I'm not scared to admit that, all right? There's just something wonderful about teaching you guys. And guys, I hope y'all have a great day. Hope y'all found this video beneficial. We got big things coming very soon in this class, all right? We're going to focus a little bit more on Alexander. Was he great or was he not? We're going to look at a lot of cool sources where you are going to have to decide. Was he great or was he not? Y'all hang in there and y'all keep these things fresh on your mind. Don't forget. Peace out. Love you guys. And go Padres. I'm going to leave y'all with my boy, Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah, that's my boy right there. What? What? Go Pods.